Aaron and I talk a lot about herbicides here on Ag PhD. Today we wanted to get into how exactly some of the pre-emerge herbicides work. Well, there are several different ways that herbicides get into plants. When we talk about the pre-emerge herbicides, there are really two primary ways that those herbicides will get into those weeds and kill them. The main way that they're going to get in is either a root inhibitor or a shoot inhibitor. That means they're well, going to go in through the root or through the shoot. Well, it's a way that we control the weeds. So we've got root inhibitor, we have shoot inhibitor. So if we've got a shoot inhibitor, for example, these are products like Harness, Surpass, Outlook, Dual, the common corn herbicides that you might think about. And a lot of the herbicide will get absorbed into the shoot and then it will stop the shoot from growing. Now, can some get in through the roots? Yes, a little bit can. But predominantly, we're trying to get into the shoot and stop that shoot from growing. So when you think about a corn plant, for example, you plant it at two inches deep. You think about a soybean plant, you're hopefully you're planting around inch, inch and a half deep. All right, but how about weed seeds? How shallow are they going to germinate? Well, this is the tough thing. When you start talking about a shoot inhibitor, well, a lot of those weeds, especially the grasses that are going to pop up in your corn, they're germinating in that top half inch or maybe inch of soil. So you've got to keep those products relatively shallow in order to do a good job. And even now, the small seeded broadleaves that these herbicides will control, I mean, it's shallow half an inch. But if you till them in a little bit too deep, now you have spread that herbicide out so the concentration is lower. Maybe it's spread out through three or four inches of soil. Your control is going to be worse than if you keep a real concentrated band in one inch of soil. Plus the fact that now you're down below where those shoots are at and even down below where some roots might be at, you don't want to do that. So with Harness Surpass, Outlook, and Dual, we often say we prefer for you to lightly incorporate them. I mean driving super fast over the field, just lightly lightly working them in because we like to have that herbicide inch to a half inch deep somewhere kind of in that range. All right now the other way to look at that Brian is what if you do no tillage at all? What if you just lay those herbicides on yep. top? Because you think about dual, harness, surpass, outlook, they all do a pretty good job if you, you can just do leave that. them on top of you the ground. You can do that but the problem is now you've got to have rain to move them down into the soil and you have to have moisture to get them into that weed. So it just requires a little more rainfall. Now is this a big deal if you're spraying you know let's say one month before emergence? Probably not. Chances are you're going to get a rain in a month. If the weeds are already starting to germinate and you've got to have control today, well, I'd much rather have light incorporation. Well, when you think about incorporation, the other type of weed control we talked about is root inhibitors. And we're talking about products like Treflan, Sonlan, Prowl, those kind of things. When you think about old Treflan, that product was pretty forgiving. You could work it in with just about anything, yep. work it in deep, work it in shallow, and it seemed like it always worked. Yeah, but keep in mind that Treflan had some vapor pressure. Sonlan does as well. So in other words, it's not going to exactly stay where you put it, even in dry soils. Just with the vapor alone, it'll kind of move around a little bit. Then you get some moisture, you got product there, it goes right into the plant, no big deal. The other thing is with any of these products, we don't want to bury them either. I mean, we don't want to get them six inches deep in the ground. So for example, in the spring, a common phenomenon we end up with is, well, there was some chisel plowing done or even just some regular mold board plowing done and you've got all these ridges out in the field. Well, if the bottom of the ridge is six inches is deeper than the top of the ridge, that can be an issue because now you've got some herbicide that's way down here. By the time you level things off, you're three, four inches deep. Well, you've effectively reduced your rate by doing that. Now, when we think about it, if you're talking about a reduced rate just up front, you're only putting a half rate or a 60% rate in the tank, what are you going to lose on these products? Are you going to lose the grass control or the broadleaf? Yep, for the most part, you're going to end up losing broadleaf control first. So with a lot of these products that we've mentioned here today, Harness Surpass, Outlook Dual, Treflan, Sonalan Prowl, they all are a little bit better on grass than they are in small seeded broadleaf. So when we talk about the Roundup Ready rate, or if you're using Liberty Link crops and you're going to put a reduced rate of one of these pre-emerge herbicides out, that's fine. But let's remember that what we really want help with for Roundup and for Ignite is we'd like to have some help for broadleaf control. So what we're trying to tell you is, you know, if I had a major broadleaf problem, I wouldn't be reducing that rate very much. Okay, now we talked about putting those products out earlier in the season. For example, on our farm, we'll start our pre-emerge applications in late March, and then we'll plant our corn in mid-April well, and yeah, our we, soybeans We used to May. do a lot of that though, Darren, when we were using full rates and we were totally counting on that product to give us 100% control. Since Roundup and Ignite came out, we don't do nearly as much of that. We plant the corn first, then we spray the, the herbicide, the Harness Surpass Outlook or Dual, 
we don't get as good a control that way because we're counting on rain to move it down in the ground, but we figure, oh, we got a rescue product with Roundup. But what happens now when Roundup doesn't work? Exactly, and that's what I'm getting at. A lot of guys are looking at this as, you know what, I'm gonna go back to a full rate of my pre. It really doesn't cost that much more money, and I'm gonna get a lot better control in my field. And you think about it, let's just say, instead of spending $10 on a corn pre, you say, you know what, I'm spending 15 this year. I'm gonna go with the full rate. Yep. That's only five bucks. That's one bushel of corn. I think you'll definitely get one more bushel of corn if you have fantastic weed control rather than just well, good uh, weed it, control. Yeah, but especially on, let's say, new ground you just picked up. You don't know what the weed pressure is like. Use the higher rate. If you spend $10 on a pre and it works perfect, great. You made the right move. If you spend $10 on a pre and you have a bunch of weeds come through it, I don't know. I think you should have had a little higher rate. Now, spending that extra five bucks, you have to look at it on your farm. What kind of return on investment am I going to get? And if you're talking about corn and you're spending one more bushel of corn for great weed control, I think you'll get a good return on okay, investment. Okay, well, whether you use a low rate or a high rate, I mean, that's obviously up to you what you want to do. We just want you to get the most bang for the buck. So it's important to understand that with the shoot inhibitors, the harness surpass outlook and dual, we want those relatively shallow and we don't want to bury the Treflan, Sonalan, Prowl, or any of the root inhibitors, but they can be just a little bit deeper. Well, that's nice to know, Brian, but will any of those products control our Weed of the Week? We'll show you coming up next.